Drama. I'm Michael Sue. And I'm William Bacon. Tonight, we're taking a look at something rather odd. A phenomenon which involves up to 90% of the population, according to some estimates. We will feel is that some of the contents of this program may be disturbing. You see, because we're so bent, we often take for granted that everyone else is too. And some of us even can't understand why anyone would want to be straight. Tonight, we take a look at heterosexuality and ask, if it's so excellent, why does it have to be enforced by law? And all the recruitment propaganda in advertising, in television, in magazines, movies, they certainly do need a lot of convincing. Mm. To test this theory, we ask some straight people to compare myths with reality. And to explore how, how secure they feel in their own sexuality. Why are they so scared of us? You know, Michael, I find them kind of scary. I think it's their hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> Gwendolyn, no, it's because they flaunt their sexuality as if they need to prove something. It's pathetic, really. Well, I feel sorry for them. I mean, they can't help themselves. They're born that way, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> right, good. Hi, Hello. we're from television. We just want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Um, can I ask your age? I'm um, 15. Um, do you think that y you could be gay later on in life? Oh, I don't think so. Do you think that I'm gay? Yeah, probably. What gives you this idea? The way you dress. Um, my name is Rachel here. I'm from La Trobe University. I'm a researcher in STDs and HIV prevention, looking broadly at heterosexuality and young people. Um, here are social theories, and it's contemporary feminist theories, a number of theoretical positions that can be taken on on the debate of sexuality and the categories of homosexuality and heterosexuality. Hi, my name is Lauren Buckle, and I'm currently doing my PhD at La Trobe University in the area of adolescent sexuality and sexual behaviour, looking at their conceptions of sexuality and how they behave in the sexual arena. Are you straight? Yes, I am. When did you realise this? Oh, God. Back in the old days? Yeah, it's my boyfriend. Oh, well, how old were you then? Oh, shit, 12. Oh, do you think I'm a fag? Um, oh, I don't know. Are you? Um, well, they tend to become aware of their gender at a very young age. Girls and boys tend to behave very, or are socialised to behave differently at a very young age, generally from <laughs> There's a bit of a debate about when people actually become aware of themselves sexually. And they're not quite, and the research doesn't seem to be very clear on this issue. Um, people have reported sexual feelings and sexual fantasies at very young ages, but these have been contested as they are amended when the people are older, so they are under some debate. So. Are you straight girls? Yeah. When did you realise this? I don't know, I guess I've always known. And how old are you? 17. Well, looking back, I, I think I must have been born gay, but I don't think I realised it until probably about 20 years of age. Um, up until then, I think I had a very straight acting life, but um, I always knew that I wasn't a straight person. 
Um, there have been a number of theories in the psychological literature about homosexuality and whether you're born straight or born gra grey. <laughs> 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 There's been a lot of debate whether it's environmental or genetic and, most, and psychology tends to come up with an interactional perspective that it's an interaction between environment and genetics. However, there's been a few studies recently which have indicated that there might be quite a strong genetic component. A few studies done in America on the brains of um, gay men showing that they're different to the brains of um, straight men. However, very little research has been done in the area of lesbian um, sexuality. Do you much and much of being this, the di this p positioning of either sexuality is determined as, as a biological, um, uncontestable state, or in fact that it's something that is culturally bound and produced culturally. Would you consider that you were born straight or did you actually become straight? Uh, I think I was born straight because of um, uh, biological imperatives like my chromosomes. I think I became straight because I mean when you're born you don't know anything, it's just from your social environment, from your parents that you learn. The development as opposed to nurture as opposed to nature. Yeah, yeah, entirely. And in that way, subverting that, the nurture-nature debate, saying that in fact the nature is entirely social, socially constructed, so in fact all they're left with is nurture. Um, I was born and I didn't think about it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know. It's a, a tricky situation and I think even the most educated people don't really know whether or not people are born straight or they become gay. I could possibly see that given another time, another place, you know, I don't know that I would have necessarily been with either a heterosexual relationship or a homosexual relationship. There appear to be multiple determinants of people's sexuality and sexual behaviour, which we're only just beginning to explore now in the area of psychology and sociology and other areas. We're not quite sure of all the determinants of sexual behaviour or sexuality. It appears to be, some of the many um, determinants appear to be um, earlier relationships, be it amongst the family, amongst friends. They might shape how you feel later on, whether you feel happy about um, intimate relationships or more insecure? I would say I was born straight, Kath. And uh, have you ever thought about or fantasised about having a homosexual relationship or experience? No, I'd honestly say I haven't. No, I, I think I was born straight, but I think that we do have a lot of influence from our peers and family as we're growing up. So. Um, I think we've all got the potential to have heterosexual relationships, but you may, I believe that if you, oh, I'm not really, oh, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I've often thought of the opposite of what it must be like, but um, to me I just can't see how. Either of which you are not. In terms of the positions that one could take up, it's really determined by what's available um, to each and every individual. I would like to say that you're free, but that's not realistic. I mean, as a woman today, you're not free. Similarly, as a man today, you're not free, but you are able to move within the discourses available. So it's a question of what is available and not what is determined within you. In the research that I've been doing with just one really, um, with one group of adolescents who all come from extremely similar backgrounds and similar ages, um, I found a number of different styles of sexual self-conceptions and they varied greatly in how they viewed themselves and their sexuality and what they thought was acceptable sexual behaviour. For some people they think multiple sexual partners are acceptable, other groups think monogamy is their acceptable way to go. The variation is so huge that a concept of normality just it doesn't seem to be appropriate in the area of human sexual behaviour. Do you think you might like girls later on in life? No, not as, not as a partner. I don't think so. No, but you wouldn't mind sleeping with one? I wouldn't want to sleep with one, no. When did you realise this? <laughs> um, puberty, I suppose. Puberty? So you don't think you'll be gay later on in life? Oh, no, you never can tell. No. Never can tell. No. Never have the desire yet, but maybe. <laughs> Sexuality, like gender, um, 
impacts on your identity from the word go. I don't think there's a particular time at which you become a true sexual being, but that sexuality is a changing thing, something that's not static, something that is developing. Great. Yeah, I had um, some conflict going in with myself actually, and it was <laughs> only last year, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, I experimented around over the years, and um, before we were married, well, I knew that it was marriage and, and love. Well, why not? It just doesn't appeal to me. How would you know if you never tried? Because I just don't have the urge. <laughs> <laughs> Is it possible you might be gay later on in life? It could be. <laughs> well, if you can take natural in a sense that you can take it on and use it as a term which expresses your desire, then you then of course that category is useful. But if it's used in fact to determine some kind of truth that's universal, then it's not useful. Obviously I can say what's natural to me, but it's contextualized, it's me. We're not talking universal. We're not talking what's natural forever for me. It's what's natural for this moment for me. What is what I want now? Identity politics relies on a congregation around a particular um, category. Therefore, if you participate in the feminist movement, then you congregate around this notion of the universal woman. Similarly, if you participate in the gay community, you're supposed to participate around this notion of the true lesbian or the true gay man. Similarly, in heterosexuality, you must congregate around the true heterosexual. So this idea of the coherent categories I find interesting and the way in which people remain within those categories by, by monitoring their own behaviours. Because you're not 100, you don't look 100% gay, you don't act like 100% gay, so... Um, what I said could be, um, your fancy dress, for example, or your funny little thing here. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> uh, gay people have a certain... Uh, personification about them, uh, uh, an aura about them, that makes them different. Um, there appears to be a great pressure, especially amongst uh, the adolescents that I work with, to maintain a heterosexual identity, to show themselves to be heterosexual. And I find that adolescents will report, even though they've been engaging into a lot, you know, you know, quite a substantial amount of homosexual behaviour, they'll say that they're heterosexual but they have had a homosexual experience. They won't actually identify themselves as gay because they find that very threatening. So even though they are engaging in the behaviours that might define them as homosexual, they won't identify in that way. Similarly, a lot of the um, adolescents also might identify as bisexual rather than gay because they still feel that is not quite all the way there as they report it. They say it's not quite, quite all the way. Well, when I was young and being brought up as a good Christian, I thought that was the only way to go and that's the only options you had and the other people all uh, walked and perhaps should have been in jail and uh, that it was a choice and uh, basically you know you never associate with foosters. Okay. Uh, gay women I've never heard of. I don't think that there is ever any other image except that of, of a male and a female being together. It's all opposite with say boys getting together and uh, foosters bashing that sort of thing went on but um, not so much heterosexuals are taken for granted. is somehow safe. It has always been constructed as safe in terms of morally safe, politically safe, and now safe from infection. I, obviously from the feminist movement we have seen that that's not a truth, that we've seen that women have never been safe within heterosexual relationships and never will be safe in that, in that absolute way. Ronnie and I have been together for, what, nine years? We've been married for be three in May, and um, we've had several separations. Um. So, on them separations, I did practice safe sex. Um, 
I mean, you have to. You just got to value your life. It's just mm. you really do. And I never practice safe sex on mine. You, you don't. As a rule, um, I, I tend to trust. For the woman says that you know, everything's all right. I'll um, believe. It. And what is safe sex to you now these days? It's basically uh, using precautions such as condoms with people that you perhaps haven't got a, a background of or that are strangers to you and uh, until such time as you establish uh, a point of confident confidence through either both being mutually blood tested. Do you assume and have you always assumed because you're heterosexual that you're safe? No. No, definitely not. So do you practice safe sex? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Have you always? Yes, but I'm a nurse, so I'm probably a bit more conscious of... I have, I'm, I'm probably a bit more conscious of, of, of being careful, not just in regards to AIDS, but other sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> uh, did you practice safe sex when you were single? I can answer so I didn't. Yeah, as an individual, it doesn't matter whether I'm gay or heterosexual, I think safe sex is uh, fundamental. But do you practice safe sex? Yeah, or... No, I don't believe in it. No, I never practice safe sex. I think sex is safe if it's done with a pure motive and a healthy mind and a healthy body. From the research we've been doing with uh, the heterosexual symbol scene, it's been astonishing that from amongst 125 to 40 year olds, mm, that's good, mm. they're constructed in terms of love and romance. But even though they have been at singles bars and clubs in Melbourne, um, seeking out casual sex, that in fact when asked about their sexual experience with ideal sexual partner or what sex means to them or why they have sex, that each of those questions have been answered in terms of love and romance. I believe I am married and I believe I'm married to a couple of girls okay. <laughs> and I'm probably married to a couple of guys too but we don't have sex if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. What well, I think one day if you can choose your gender similarly it's not that easy to pick and choose your sexuality for that day. I don't know you, you read a lot of stories about people that have always believed that they've been born a male um, and they're trapped in this female's body, so I'm not really sure on how I feel about that. Do you have kids? I have kids, yep. Yeah. Would you mind if they turned out being gay? I don't have a problem with it. I've got a girlfriend, but I'm not married, now. If you have kids later on in life, would you mind if they grow up gay? Oh, that's a pretty difficult question, but I think no. I have no problem with it, now. No, I'll support them in every way. Personally, for myself, to be gay is wrong. Well, to me, to me, I don't like that. I suppose I have to accept it because it's my child, you know, I can't block it out. I mean, that's my child's business, I'm trying to do this. I think I'd be proud, actually. It, it wouldn't, if, if um, Jessie grew up and said at some stage that she was gay, I think I'd I'd start start some kind of a, a battle to, to make sure that um, 
if I felt that, that she was being prejudiced at all or if she was going through a lot of hassles, I think I'd just be there behind her fighting for her. It's easy for me to say even that I'll accept Jessie as being gay, but I don't know, maybe if it did, I might be embarrassed to tell my workmates, who knows? You just can't tell. If Jessie said that she was bisexual, I think I'd be concerned that, I guess maybe that, that she'd be fairly promiscuous, that she'd be treating sex as a fairly casual um, thing, and, and I'm not sure how I really feel about I think I always had something that against bisexuality. I had a lot more time for, for, tr for homosexuals that were in a, a monogamy, you know, that, that were either with male or with, with females, and I always had a thing about bisexuality, and I felt that they just, it, they just took sex as whatever they wanted. They weren't true homosexuals. Now I think that, that my beliefs have changed somewhat, and it's really how you just perceive sex whether it's something to be enjoyed or if it has to be in some kind of monogamous relationship. I'm aware of the issues around the most of bisexuality. There's lots, lots of different things coming from different quarters about bisexuality not being uh, a true category, but somehow people who are who claim to be bisexual are uh, suffering from some kind of false consciousness that either they're not, you know, they're not quite ready to come out of the closet or um, they're confused or indeed something else to play. Also, people criticise this position as being somehow affected by thoughts without, without actually having the political commitment to one camp or the other. I actually dispute this. I think that in many ways the category of bisexuality could be useful in that it disrupts this notion that you must occupy one position and not the other. That in fact, positions are coherent in, the, in their very nature. I don't believe for a moment that one necessarily has to occupy a heterosexual or homosexual position for your entire life. I mean, I've got lots of different scenarios which the adolescents look at and they're supposed to decide is this person gay or is he straight. So there's one example, um, there's a guy that tends to have lots, um, that goes out with girls a lot and then he gets sent away to an um, army retreat in the middle of nowhere and there's army men and he has a loving sexual relationship with a the man there. When he comes back to the city and engages in sex with girls again, is he gay or is he straight? I mean, of course, it was consensual sex when he went away to the army retreat, so it is very difficult to say what his preferences are. This is just one of the variations that there could be. There's other examples in which um, women might be, a woman might be engaged in, in a heterosexual relationship, but all her fantasies and all her desires are directed towards other women, or her behaviour is different. Is she gay or is she straight? These are not simple questions to answer. Fine. I mean, everybody for their own choice of sexuality. It's, you know, bisexual, um, lesbian, it doesn't matter. You know? Could be fun. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so everybody's happy. If you're happy, I mean, you've got to discover yourself and that, that, well, that means be. going out into the world. What do you think of bisexual? I think they get the copy of the best of both worlds, but I think bisexuals live dangerously unless they, they protect themselves very, very well. Think of bisexual. Um, interesting. <laughs> um, I find them fascinating. A lot of my friends feel that it's nothing more than a cop out. That they they're unable to um, settle on who they really are. So they play both games, if you like, um, and play it safe because they have the. the the straight life as well as the gay life. Um, but I don't think it's quite as easy as that. I think it's very complicated for some people. And until they, they realise who they are, if, if they find themselves as bisexual, that's, that's okay with me. Okay, basically, I think there's just so many different types of sexual behaviour. We've got heterosexuality, we've got homosexuality, bisexuality, transsexuality, queer, the list sort of goes on and on and on. And we could just I don't really see why people get upset about what sort of sexual identity people have. And sexual identity, of course, changes as people change as well. Um, as long as it doesn't hurt or injure another person, I really can't see that it matters what people's sexuality is. The question is, of course, where do you draw the line? I think more usefully the question should be who draws the line. And 
Is that where discussions 